Hey watch lovers, Brad from Brent Miller Jewelers. And today I have for us four titanium models. I have two Tudor, I have the Pelagos 42, the Pelagos 39 in my left hand and in my right here, I have the Grand Seiko SBGE 285 and 283. The 83 is the black dial, the 85 here is uh, often referred to as the mist flake dial with some texture on there, kind of a gray, subtle gray, not a white dial. And uh, really the reason I'm doing this video is I had someone reach out uh, essentially asking me to compare and what my thoughts were uh, looking for a titanium watch um, and really narrowed it down to, I believe it was the uh, the P39 here and the SBGE285, might've been the 83, but I'll show you both of them. Um, you know, obviously both of these would be a little bit more similar to black dials. And uh, the question that was asked to me is, you know, which one do you prefer and, you know, don't want to pay the premium on the Grand Seiko? And Frankly, gang, I really try to not give you my personal comments in these videos. Try to present the facts, put them side by side, and let you, the consumer, uh, decide how you want to spend your money. That's not my job uh, to tell you how to spend your money. It's really just to try to give these side by side and uh, and let you make the decision of what's best for you. I'm just one watch enthusiast, and uh, our, our, you know, our uh, what we're looking for in a watch may be completely different. Um, and so again, I'm just gonna put these side by side and and really just let you get a good look at them here and let me know, you know, do you wear titanium? Uh, I hear from a lot of folks, first time titanium owners end up getting it and you know they don't like how light it is. They like to feel the weight, the heft of the stainless steel watch. Uh, I will tell you, I do prefer titanium uh, when it's done well. And I think all four of these are done well. Uh, I've come around on it and, uh, and like the lightness. Um, so I am a fan of titanium. Not that I don't like stainless steel, but uh, all of these are um, obviously going to wear a little bit lighter. I'm not going to go over the specs on all of these. I will list them in the description. I reviewed these plenty enough that, uh, again, I'll list all the specs in the description if you're looking for the actual specs. But uh, let's get these on wrist. Um, I think that's going to be important to help out the individual who reached out to me. Um, and then we also got to talk about pricing. You know, So we'll start with the smallest here, the uh, 39 millimeter Pelagos 39. This comes in at $4,700. So... Uh, again, and I'll, I will do bezel action here at the end and give you a loom shot as well. So again, I have a six and three quarter inch wrist. This camera is maybe 10 inches from my wrist right now. So just always take that into perspective. You're going to see, they're going to look larger in any wrist roll or just a close up like this. But um, again, I think I could easily wear this size and uh, feels pretty good on my six and three quarter inch wrist. So there's the P39 for you again. You got a titanium case and bracelet. You do have a solid stainless steel case back on this. Bezel action. Really good, as you would expect. Just about all these Tudor dive watches have great bezel action. And then we'll compare that to the SBGE 283 here since it does have the black dial. Again, a little bit larger case. You got the Evolution 9. The uh, You have a better taper on the, um, or I shouldn't say better. That's my opinion. You have a more drastic taper on the Tudor, which I do prefer. Um, but again, really nice bracelet. Construction is really nice. I love the look of this bracelet on these Evolution 9 cases. And again, it just kind of sits on my wrist pretty well. Even though it's a larger watch, I feel like it wears well. And the titanium, the lightweight, does make this more wearable for my wrist, even though I have a smaller watch preference. So hopefully that helps a little bit. And again, fixed bezel on this, so you are not rotating that. You just want to look at the bracelet here, the clasps real quick. You do have the T-fit on the um, on the Tudor where you have uh, no micro adjustments. So that's another feature you're not going to get on this Grand Seiko. However, you do have the lovely spring drive movement with the exhibition case back. So if you want to see your movement, if that's important to you, uh, Grand Seiko does allow you to do that. These SBGE models come in at $8,400. So... There is a premium on them, and uh, while I have this out, we'll go to back to the Tudor. This is the Pelagos 39 LHD, LHD left-hand crown. So the crown's on the left, and you also have uh, more like what I'll call E-crew or beige markers, um, kind of a faux patina, but you do have a uh, roulette date wheel. Your even days of the week are going to be done in red. Uh, no date complication here on the P39, but you do get the Pelagos text in red on both. So hopefully that's a, a good look there. You can also see the knurling on the bezel here, a little bit uh, more compact and uh, a little bit closer together, actually a lot closer together compared to that P39 bezel. So again, here's the 42. Where's a little bit larger than I'd prefer on my wrist at 42 millimeters, but again, if you like a large watch or have a larger wrist, I know not everybody has a sub seven inch wrist. 
give you a look to see how that wears. And then on this model, you do have the uh, highly adjustable clasp here on the outside. You have three fixed positions here, where if it's in that position, it's not gonna move. And then if you do loosen it here, you have springs on the underneath, side, underneath on the side of this clasp that allow this to um, allow your wrist to uh, kind of just move with your wrist throughout the day. So uh, that's the clasp on it. And then last and not least, or but not least, SBGE 285. Again, really nice textured dial, spring drive movement. Love the floating seconds hand on this. Again, the grand tickets you're getting the date complication. P39 you're not, and the 42 you are. And then you also have GMT. So these are GMTs as well. All of them uh, signed screw down crowns. So again, it's gonna wear, I think it looks a little bit larger just aesthetically because of the lighter dial. But again, the specs are the same as the, uh, the 283. So hopefully that gives you a little bit better idea of these side by side. And uh, genuinely curious, you know, do you like titanium watches? Uh, what models are your favorite? If you own one, what do you own or what do you wear? I uh, would love to hear and read that in the comments. Let me hit the lights, give you a quick loom shot. As always, if there's anything I can do for you, anything at all, shoot me an email, brad at brentlmiller.com. I got the tutors here. You got the LHD on my left, the 39 on my right. And then this is the 285. Again, pretty good loom on them all. Obviously, you got a loom bezel on your Pelago. So if loom is important to you, the tutors may be your option. So again, let me know what you guys think. Where are you spending your money? Uh, if you're looking at one of these four, look forward to uh, hearing what you have in the comments. Thanks for viewing. And we'll see you in the next video.